The West Palm Beach Fishing Club's charitable affiliate, the Palm Beach County Fishing Foundation, is getting ready to launch its fourth batch of reef darts. So you might be wondering, what is a reef dart? Well, a reef dart is a unique artificial reef concept where we repurpose surplus utility poles and concrete culverts, and when we push them off the barge, we get them to settle in a vertical orientation on the ocean floor, creating really high vertical profile in the water column. The high relief that reef darts create attracts all kinds of fish, not just benthic species like snapper and grouper, but also fish higher up in the water column like tunas, sailfish, and dolphin. This is the fourth year that we've been putting reef darts out off of Palm Beach County. This particular batch is going to be added to our other reef darts out in 500 feet of water due east of Palm Beach Inlet. It is actually Florida's deepest artificial reef that's been permitted by the state of Florida, and it's already attracting a lot of attention. The Reef Dart Initiative is a wonderful private-public partnership. The West Palm Beach Fishing Club builds these units and donates them to Palm Beach County. The county, in turn, pays for all of the permitting and deployment costs. We've done it four years now. This will be the fourth, yeah. And I've been with it right from the beginning. It's been an exciting project. It's quite unique, it's exciting, it's uh, state of the art, I guess you would call it. The community is really involved in this. We have private donors that donate not only dollars for the program, but also the materials, the surplus poles and culvert. It's a win-win for the whole community. The fishing public benefits from reef darts because we're creating new fishing locations, not only for bottom fish species, but also pelagic species. And the marine environment is the real winner here. These reef darts going out in 500 feet are basically creating a de facto protected area. It's difficult to fish at that depth, and there's not a lot of structure at that depth as well. So it's really important to help increase the habitat for some of these overfished species of snappers and groupers. Again, a win-win for everybody involved, including the fish. Now I look at this as a spawning reef, meaning you've got all the structure down there, but it's really too deep to successfully fish it, and it's too deep to easily dive on it. So hopefully the fish that, that aggregate and spawn here are not gonna be you know, uh, harvested at, quite as easily. And we'll, you're gonna see more of them, and um, I'm, I can't tell you how excited I am for to finally be getting in what I consider to be a spawning reef. Each reef dart weighs approximately 8 to 10 tons. Some of them measure 45 feet tall. So imagine a forest of reef darts on the bottom as high as 45 feet. That's why we're trying to create something not only for bottom species of fish, but pelagic species as well. The base of the culvert is made out of rebar and an 8 foot by 8 foot concrete pad where the surplus culvert is inserted and becomes the collar, if you will, for the utility pole that is later inserted in a second process during the construction phase. This load of reef darts this year is approximately 400 tons of material, the reef darts and the excess culverts that we've collected. We're really excited to get this material on the bottom and see what happens. A new twist to the reef dart program this year is we've really upped our game on monitoring. Because reef darts are still somewhat experimental and sticking a pole straight up on the bottom has really never been done before, we want to make sure we know what's happening. And so we've added acoustic receivers to our reef dart sites. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's Marine Lab in Tequesta, Florida is partnering with us on this effort. Over time, these acoustic receivers are going to reveal what kind of fish and other marine animals are utilizing reef dart sites. Fisheries biologist Jim Whittington can tell us a whole lot more about this unique monitoring effort using acoustic receivers and transmitter tags. But this is the receiver and what it looks like. And that receiver in 500 foot has a buoy around it that we'll be able to automatically release it 
and when it comes to the top, then we'll be able to get the data from that. Now, the other part of this acoustic system is the tag, and these tags go in fish, whatever you want to monitor. There's the sharks that are monitored. We're monitoring cobia right now. They do snappers, they do groupers. This gets surgically implanted. This particular tag is a four-year tag, so it'll last for four years. There's probably anywhere from 40 to 50 organizations, at least along this coast, that are doing similar things. This network is large, so we're able to cover from, say, Texas all the way up to Maine right now. This is an area that we haven't been able to monitor in the past, so now we're starting to spread our acoustic array further offshore. Looking forward, we hope to expand our community partners. The Reef Dart Initiative takes a very big collaborative effort. It's not just one entity that makes this happen. So if you're interested in getting involved, contact the West Palm Beach Fishing Club. We are eager to share what we've learned the last four years, and we think there's a lot of potential up and down the entire eastern seaboard to do the same thing that we're doing, creating additional marine habitat in some of the places that need it most.